Now, for my data source, I'm just going to use, to make my demo uh, simple, I'm going to embellish it with publicly available data. And I've chosen uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Service website. And so when I'm done, I'm going to be able to ask my, um, my chat application all kinds of information uh, uh, pursuant to you know, uh, hunting and fishing regulations in the state of Florida. I'll show you the sync process and the process of actually previewing and creating the web experience. So here we go. Okay, so at this point, what I've done is I have gone into the management console and you can see that, um, well, here I am. I'm in the Amazon queue. Now, this is actually a little bit of a, a misnomer. They should have titled this queue for business because like I said, Amazon queue is a general heading and what you see here is it has nothing to do with you know a lot of the other services like there's nothing in here about the redshift sql editor so this is really q for business specifically creating q for business applications now i'm going to go ahead and create an application but first let me take you through this little flow chart here to show you how it works so first of all i'm going to create an application give it a name and configure it with something called a retriever and data sources. That's the key bit to focus on. Uh, I could do some enhancements by adding plugins and adding uh, topic guardrails. One of the things that AWS is, is very, um, has made a point of emphasis is safety in AI. So this is something that's being actively debated, you know, in, in the industry right now as people are kind of scared about what AI is doing, not that it's going to take over the world, but that, you know, there's already been notable cases where people have used AI technology to, 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 to uh, do all kinds of abuse. <laughs> okay. And so, um, Amazon is kind of uh, uh, going all in on the safety part of it. And sometimes it gets in your way. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Uh, once I do that, I'll, cust I'll, I'll preview a web experience and then deploy the web experience. So first, let's go ahead and create an application. This will go quick. I'm going to give my application a name. So I'm going to call this, uh, because I'm going to use this as a way to uh, uh, embellish the information in the Florida and Fish and Wildlife uh, Service site, I'll just say FFW2. Uh, uh, next, I need to create a role because Amazon Q is going to need to do some things in my account. So I just so happen to have an existing service role available from the first time that I went through this. And so here it is right here. Encryption. So my data is encrypted by default with a KMS key that's uh, managed. So when they're talking about encryption, they're really talking about, you know, all of the metadata uh, behind this uh, application that's being uh, created. Tags, of course, I can create. So I'll go ahead and just create this. Now this process is going to take uh, probably about 30 seconds, uh, depending on whether I created a role or not. So the role typically takes about uh, 10 seconds of that. So you can see it's back uh, pretty quickly. Next, the queue for business application is pretty much useless unless we hook it up with what's called a retriever. So the retriever is about retrieving data that is going to be additional data that we're going to make available to the existing uh, AI model to embellish its, uh, its behavior when it formulates the answers to the questions that we ask it. You have a couple of choices. Uh, the existing retriever is based on uh, Amazon Kendra, but I think the interesting ones is the native retrievers. Uh, this is this is the part to pay attention to coming up here because of the available data sources here. There's like 27 of them I'm going to go through. It's pretty neat. And then indexing indexing provisioning. Um, you know how much um, uh, how much capacity do you want for the index? So what Q for Business is going to do? It uses an existing model, and then it uses what we call RAG retrieval augmented uh, generation to basically kind of expand the universe of knowledge that's available to it. And in my example, I'm just going to do it by, by pointing it to a state of Florida website. But, um, but uh, we, could use, we could use this to, uh, to index a huge amount of data. So they're basically saying, how much capacity do you want? Now, one thing I have not figured out yet is the impact of this on the pricing. So Q for Business is currently in preview. 
And the way, spoiler alert, the way you pay for it is by active user per month, which then leads me to the question, why wouldn't I just crank this up as high as I wanted it to, since I am not penalized for how much space I allocate for my index? I haven't got the answer to that yet, but my demo is going to be pretty small, so I'll just say one. All right, now here's the fun part. Here are my data sources. The entire point of this is so I can take this queue for business application and point it to my data that it can learn about. So quick, easy choices, Amazon S3, put whatever you want in an S3 bucket and let it have fun. A web crawler, this is what I'm going to use to point it to the Florida Fish and Wildlife site. Uh, you can upload files too, Although I'm a little bit puzzled by this option because, you know, how many files can you really upload that would make a difference and why wouldn't you just point to S3 in that case uh, anyway. But the really compelling bit is down here. Look at these other data sources that Amazon uh, Q for Business understands. Adobe Experience, Manager, Alfresco if you're doing content management, uh, FSX, you know, just anything that's on, you know, a, a file system. It understands how to work with relational databases. It understands things like Confluence and Drupal and Dropbox, Gmail and Google Drive. Here's some other database, Jira. Let's say I want to build an application and I pointed it at my Jira system and I just wanted to say what are the most common, what are the most common causes of errors that are reported or what are the most common um, uh, uh, files that are uh, being changed. I, I could figure that out by just pointing it to my Jira. All right, so I'll go ahead and say finish, and you can see that the application has been created. It also says not yet deployed. I'll get to that in a second. It's using a native retriever. And if I click on the application itself, I see my overall flow chart here. And uh, let's see, where's my data source? You know, I think, you know what I did is I, <laughs> I actually forgot to actually choose the data source. So let me go through that screen again. What I wanted to do on the data source screen is I, uh, <laughs> I meant to click on this for the web crawler. Okay, so the name of my data source is going to be Florida Fish and Wildlife. And I'm just going to point it to the URL of the Florida Fish and Wildlife site, which is right here. So this is it. Now this is a publicly facing website. So, so please keep this in mind that the demo that I'm doing right now is a little bit contrived. If, if, if I wanted information about the, from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Service, such as, you know, what's the process for getting a fishing license or when is it hunting season for turkey, I can ask ChatGPT or Google for that right now and I can find that out. So I'm just using this as an example Imagine that instead of an external facing website, this is an internal SharePoint or something like that. Okay. Another reason for using this website is there's no authentication. Uh, I don't need a web proxy. I don't need secrets manager. I don't need to configure VPC or security groups. Now, as far as an IAM role, I do need an IAM role uh, for this, but I've already created one uh, the last time I did this demo. So I'll just use that one. Uh, and then how and when do you want to sync this? So do I want to sync the domains, the subdomains, or just the domains only? It kind of depends. So if I was doing the entire floor, state of Florida website, well, then subdomains would be very relevant to that. Uh, sync mode. How often do you want to synchronize and to what depth do you want to synchronize? Uh, how frequently do you want to do this? I'll just say weekly and I'll have it synchronize on Tuesdays. Uh, field mappings. Now this can get quite complicated, but because we're just going through a, uh, a website, basically all we do is, is uh, track down the URLs and the titles and the things like that. This is actually relevant because one of the cool things you're going to see later in the demo is when I get responses back, they're going to have citations in them. And the citations are going to link to specific parts of that fish and wildlife website that's relevant to the answer that's given which I think is a, a very good feature. So I'll go ahead and add the data source. And it doesn't like my role. Let's go check the role again. Uh, tell you what, let me just create a new role. 
I think the role that it creates is specific to the application. So I probably have to create a new one each time I come in here. A little bit of a pain in the neck. It will take a moment for it to create this. It says 30 seconds. So it's doing a couple things. First of all, it's creating the role, of course. But it's also setting up, it actually uses uh, uh, Amazon Open Search uh, behind the scenes for the index. But specifically, it uses Open Search serverless for the index. So we don't have to worry that there's a, you know, an EC2 instance running in the background the whole time. So that means you can do a demo like this and you can actually leave the thing up. And if nobody's using it, it costs nothing. Okay. All right, so now the data source is being created. And uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, or I would do, is I would run a synchronization by hitting this sync now. So that does just what it sounds like. It's going to basically cause Q for Business to go out, take a look at the data sources defined in the retriever. In this case, it's going to be a web crawling exercise, and it's going to suck all the information it can into the index and it will use that to augment the uh, information when it generates the responses. Now, if I did hit sync now, it would take about, in my experience, 30 to 45 minutes to finish syncing everything in that, in that uh, State of Florida website. So it just so happens that I've already done this before. I have another copy of this application in another region where I've already gone through the sync process. Now, um, before I show you that, though, um, let me show you this. Let me show you uh, previewing the web experience. So when you say preview the web experience, this is going to give you the ability to customize the web experience. So you can give it a title. I'll call this Q uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife or something like that. I can put in the subtitle, a welcome message. I can have some sample prompts. I can save this. This is just a definition of what my, my web um, you know, page is going to look like. Uh, for some reason, it, this thing just stays here in the way, so you have to hit this button to make it go away. And then you can start asking the questions right away, such as, um, uh, how about this one? Summarize. The regulations for snook fishing. Now, hit, go ahead and hit this search. It's going to think about this for a second, and it's going to come back and say, I don't know. And the reason it doesn't know is because it hasn't finished that uh, synchronization process yet. 30 minutes, I come back, and it's going to tell me all about, oh, you can't do it in the month of October or whatever. Okay, or Tampa Bay is off limits or, you know, whatever the rules are. Okay. Now, I showed you that. So I can show you what it looks like when it's done. So earlier, I created a, a queue for business application using the same steps that I showed you, except I've gone through the synchronization process and I have deployed this as a web application. So this web application is all ready to go. Let me go ahead and uh, copy this link address and open up a new window right here and paste it in. Now, when I created this as a web application, one of the things you need to do is you need to incorporate it with some type of authentication mechanism, um, as long as it's, uh, it has SAML capability. So I don't really have a SAML you know, um, server sitting around uh, handy to get ready to go. So I just used Identity Center. That's why it's asking me to sign in with Identity Center here. So that's my username and my password. I think that's my password. I'll sign in. And this should take me directly to my published and deployed Florida Fish and Wildlife website. And so now I can ask it a question um, a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, sophisticated. Let me switch back. Okay, why is Windows not working for me? <laughs> Bear with me just a second. Okay, here we go. Not sure what happened there. All right, so here I have a kind of a complicated question about what are the different Florida species, when are the hunting seasons, 
uh, relevant to the uh, the mode of hunting. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it that question, which is a which is a, a relatively complicated question, which requires summarization. It requires that um, the large language model go out and digest uh, information on potentially multiple pages and come back with one answer. And here it is, and it's showing me you know, deer, wild turkey, uh, squirrels, bobcats, rabbits, stuff like that. Okay, and it has the different rules and, and things for each one. The thing that I really like about this is the citations. So you can see here these little things that look like footnotes. Those are footnotes, those are citations. And so if I were to open one of these in another window, that's going to take me directly to the place in that, um, that data source relevant to the information being presented. And I really like this because, you know, if you get an answer that's a little bit suspect, it's nice to be able to check that out. Okay. All right. So that is what you can do with Q for Business.